Now, when I get to plan unit development waterfront, you're going to see a lot of these regulations again. So my, my presentation won't be quite as long for now. Uh, let, me, uh, let me keep going ahead here. Okay, 8-4.5, perimeter buffers in, and open space. Yep. This is what I prepared the PowerPoint for. But, but let me go over it, first of all, just, just verbally reading off the ordinance. We certainly want an existing naturally um, wooded buffer to remain where it exists. I mean, we need to be careful because obviously if you cut down that and you plant it in little trees, it's going to take those little trees a long time, a very long time, before they provide the kind of buffer that, that you get from a naturally wooded buffer. But where we do have gaps of greater than 400 square feet in the naturally wooded buffer, we are uh, proposing to require landscaping. Now, the wording of this is much more complicated than it actually is. But essentially, one canopy tree takes 130 square feet of planting area. Uh, one understory tree takes 90 square feet a planting area. And a shrub takes about 30 square feet of planting area. If you add it up, one canopy tree, two understory trees, and three shrubs, you get 400 square feet. That's what we would call a one-to-one -one relationship because you got 400 square feet, you got a landscape, and you've got landscaping available that's going to take up that 400 square feet. So it's a one-to-one -one relationship. Now, because we have things like overhead lines and we have things uh, that you would not necessarily want a canopy tree to go under, we do have a provision that in lieu of a canopy tree, adjusted numbers of understory trees and or shrubs shall be required as determined in accord with this section. What that means is that if you can't use the canopy tree for 130 square feet, Maybe you can use a regular tree, understory tree of 90 square feet and a shrub of 30 square feet in place of it. You'd have a 10 foot difference, but I'll get to that here in just a minute. You'll never have more than a 15 foot difference either over or under simply because, because math, essentially. Uh, a shrub takes 30 square feet, so the most you can ever be off is half of that. It's 15 square feet. Okay, let me go over these slides. That may. Since I got into trouble to make them, might as well go over them, right? Okay, uh, let me see here. We've already covered the one to one relationship. Now, here's the thing you can get 400 square feet if you take uh, one canopy tree, two understory trees, and three shrubs. As I said a minute ago, if you do three understory trees and four shrubs, you only get 390 square feet. So what happens to the remaining 10 square feet? We would probably just require them to plant in grass or other non-woody plantings, which might be flowers, okay? Okay, uh, area of 500 square feet. We can't get exactly to 500 square feet in terms of uh, plantings, uh, 490 or 510 square feet is as close as we can get. Uh, if they chose 490, which would be using the canopy tree, which we want them to use when they can, uh, remainder would be in grass or non-woody plantings, or if they went over 510 square foot, we would allow them to reduce the shrub, uh, shrub size to ensure survivability. We require that shrubs be six feet in the height at maturity, at least six feet in the height. But uh, to ensure survivability, we would probably <laughs> allow smaller shrubs in that case. Survivability is a big point here, uh, as we want these to stay around. These are just some other examples of 600 square feet. Um, you know, again, you can get to 600 square feet if you don't plant a canopy tree. If you plant a canopy tree, you're going to be off. Uh, but either one is okay in the zoning ordinance because we want to be flexible. Uh, 700 square feet, 
sort of the same situation uh, in reverse. Um, you can get to a 700 if you plant a canopy tree, but if you cannot plant a canopy tree for reasons of overhead wires or you know water tanks or whatever, um, you know you'll get close. A 750 is more the same thing, and I, I don't want to drag y'all through this unnecessarily, but um, and I'll certainly be happy to go back over it again. Uh, if we're over 800 square feet, uh, trees and shrubs would be close to a percentage ratio of 50-50 as possible, realizing that that's not always going to be possible because of math again. Um, but we'll always get within 15 square feet of regardless of what the square footage to be planted is. And that, that's really the important thing that I'm trying to get across is that, uh, that we're going to have good coverage. Okay. All right. So that's what that's what I mean by buffers. And uh, sorry if I drove that out a little long. But uh, if I can say something, Wally, because sure, I went over this about ten times at home, and then tried to explain it to the dog, and then <laughs> came in and talked with you and Tanya about it this morning. And it really helps the more I understand it. And for the people that are watching the thing, and what are they talking about in square feet? Because I wrote some things down. Trees don't grow in squares, obviously. They grow in no. circles. Um, so that's taken into account. The dimensions are measured on the ground, but not 35 feet in the air. Mm -hmm. uh, under story trees basically grow under a canopy tree. If you mm -hmm. plant up at the same time, you're probably going to end up with canopy trees because what? under story trees, unless they're planted like a dogwood underneath mm -hmm. a canopy already existing, they're going to grow in the sunlight like everything else. And right. we understand that. Uh, without a canopy overhead, though, the, all the understory trees are, are may die or they may grow to the size of a canopy over 35 feet. And uh, as okay. I know before, if a shrub grows to 12 feet, it, it becomes an understory tree, which is kind of neat. But the big thing is it's, this gives the developer some rules to follow, and it yes. gives the zone administrator rules to follow when he's looking at their plan. That's Correct. what I, I like about what you put together. That's the, that's the whole idea. Uh, now, if we, if we do get to the point where we're talking about landscaping strips and site planner zoning, then, of course, we'll, yes. we'll have to look at something a little bit differently. But, uh, but yes. Okay, moving on, <laughs> if I may. Uh, number three under uh, 8.4-5, I'm still there. A uh, 40-foot buffer requirement can be waived, obviously, upon application by the developer by city council if the proposed district's perimeter boundary lies adjacent to property subject to the same PUD and MU district designation. Let me, let me go back to the first part of this and basically say what that means. Um, Basically, this buffer right here for legacy, for example, would be eligible to be waived because it is adjoining property that's in the planning development mixed use district. If it does not abut property in a mixed use district, it cannot be waived <coughs> unless the underlying zoning district has it as commercial, in which case it can be waived down to 50%, down to 20 feet. We're not advocating changing that. Um, we, uh, we feel that it is important that city council retains some ability to uh, modify and waive, uh, you know, as, as is appropriate in looking at these plans. Um, Okay, use is permitted in open space. Here again, um, you know, city council can, can alter this. But what we're trying to say here is that you can have non-commercial recreational structures and uses. You can have public and maintenance utilities beyond what is minimally necessary for development. As long as they're basically perpendicular, they disturb as little buffer as possible. Um, Stormwater management facilities, non-tidal wetlands, uh, that's unchanged, but uh, we still got it in there. Uh, areas to provide reasonable, this is number five, uh, under uh, 8.4.5, B5, sorry. Uh, areas to include reasonable buffering between dissimilar uses within such development which may include walls or fencing. The idea is that if, if the buffer is waved down to close to zero or whatever, we may want some walls in there to provide some screening 
between the uh, planned unit development use and adjoining properties. Again, that will be up to the zoning administrator, uh, that lucky person. Okay. Um, Under 8.4-6C, uh, uh, I added another subject to Americans with Disability Act requirements. Um, corrected the typographical area error under uh, 8.2-7B, uh, just referenced the appropriate uh, article of the ordinance. Um, under 8.4-8, this is not taking away your authority, city council's authority to set setbacks, which you have now. This is just saying that should the city council not specify any setbacks, uh, they will default to 10 foot for side yards and 20 foot for uh, rear yards. Okay. All right. Under, let me make sure I got the right section here. Under 8.4-8C, outer perimeter, uh, we don't want paved surfaces in the perimeter. Um, you know, unless it, of course, has been waived by the city council for whatever reason, or modified. But, uh, and uh, under three, you'll notice I put alleys because alleys are allowed. And 8.4-10, fence and wall requirements. Basically, we reworded that section because the way it looked when, when it was first out, it just wasn't worded very well. It made it, it a, a, a person might think that the zoning administrator had to approve our request. Well, he does if you want to build the fence <laughs> and the wall, but he doesn't have to approve it if he doesn't think it, uh, you know, if it doesn't meet our requirements. So we reworded it, and we also added the part that uh, if you're using the fence for wall for screening purpose, it could be up to six feet in height. Um, okay, the last one here, this is the last one, 8.4-11, minimal architectural design. We, I, uh, talk to the planning commission a lot in terms of um, the architectural changes that we made to the townhouses the last time legacy modifications came up. And I'm afraid we got a little bit too aggressive. Uh, I'm going to suggest that that or that we've got crossed out right before other architectural elements, I'm going to suggest that we might want to keep that or because that gives us a little bit more flexibility to look at individual, individual uh, architectural designs. For example, if we're talking about houses, not every house is gonna have a balcony. And it's probably unreasonable to say that every house ought to have a balcony. Now, there, there'll certainly be some other architectural features that we'll look at. But, uh, but the point of the matter is that uh, you may have some buildings that are lacking one of these four things that I listed at the very least, but the city council may want to, um, that's why I'm saying keep the word or don't cross that out, um, but they may look at, the city council may want to look at other architectural elements that, uh, that accomplish attractive architectural design. So I'll just leave it at that. that that's the one change that, that from the staff um, level we would we would recommend that you consider you may be fine with it. i mean you know that's fine too but wally i lost you on that which which one was uh this i'm sorry this is the very last one uh 8.4-11 minimal minimum architectural design okay. could you define uh articulated massing a little yes. bit better for me yes i can Articulated massing is instead of a straight wall, you've got some definition in it, like it could be a bay window. Oh, okay. Uh, you know, something that, that uh, sometimes they do it with, the, with the, the, the gable roofs where they'll kind of stick out a little bit, but it's not flat. Okay. Yeah. Yes, sir. 
Mr. Council, uh, the point that, uh, that Mr. Horton was making relating to 8.4-11, the original language of the ordinance, talked about, you know, these structures would need to have windows, balconies, or bay windows, or other architectural elements. And those worked well together uh, in, the, uh, in the drive to add articulated massing, which seemed important to Council as it reviewed the elevation map we looked at previously. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, the one step too far was to take out the or other stuff. Um, the or other architectural elements was part of the original uh, language. We're respectfully suggesting that if you move on this uh, ordinance revision that you keep the original language in that, si in that uh, line that begins with the strike through oh. word or. Otherwise, every structure would have to have a window, a balcony, a bay window, and articulated massing. And uh, I think the, it was envisioned really primarily for townhouses to make sure that it wasn't, you know, a, a flat-faced, cookie-cutter kind of deal, but this also applies to the single-family houses and others. I don't think we're looking for, you know, hundreds upon hundreds of balconies. <laughs> no. I, I just didn't understand what the words meant. Does right, that conclude your uh, the presentation on that line? That's okay. It. So we putting the war back in there? Is that what we're doing? I would su respectfully suggest, suggest yeah. that you leave that one sentence in 8.4-11, which begins with the word or, originally in its original configuration, yeah. which would say or other architectural elements in order to achieve attractive architectural design may be included. Right. Sounds good to me. All right, any, any questions of uh, Wiley on number five here? And for what we do up in the public here, this is an ordinance amending the zoning ordinance, Article 8.4, Plan Unit Development Mixed Use Overlay District. Okay. We'll open the public hearing and ask if anybody in our audience who would like to address this item. Okay. Seeing none, we'll move on with the motion of Council Senator Mayor, I move that we adopt an ordinance amending the zoning ordinance by revising Article 8.4 Plan Unit Development Mixed Use Overlay District and change 8.4-11 to include the original language or other architectural elements. That's so well done. That's so well done. Thank you. Do you have a second, Karen? Yes, sir. Okay, we have a motion made and second. Any other concerns or comments? If not, Ms. Kim? Councilman Hux? Aye. Councilman Southall? Aye. Vice Mayor Freeman? Aye. Councilman Green? Aye. Councilman Fye? Aye. Mayor Hessel? Aye. Mayor, the motion carried by vote is six to zero. Thank you, Kim. Let's move on to item six. It's an ordinance amending the zoning ordinance article 8 dash, well, excuse me, 8.3 plan unit development waterfront overlay district. Okay. Uh, probably going to be able to go through this one a lot faster because uh, essentially the changes we made to PUD MU have been incorporated into the PUD W plan unit development waterfront. Um, Basically, it's it's the same changes. There's a few differences between the waterfront district and the, and the uh, MU district, though. One of them is the amount of the buffer. It's 50 feet in the waterfront, and it's and it's uh, of course it's 40 feet in MU. So we worded everything to address the 50 foot buffer there instead of the 40 foot buffer. Uh, that was a change. Uh, the other change is uh, there is not waiver language in the waterfront ordinance. Uh, so if you want to modify anything, you got to do it as part of the master plan. There's not similar language as, you know, PUDMU talks about if you're surrounded by PUDMU, you can eradicate the buffer. There's no such language for waterfront. Of course, again, we don't have any waterfront we don't have any planned unit development waterfront property in the city at this point anyway. Um, and not to minimize that, but the fact is we don't, and I don't know, I don't know when we might. Uh, 
Um, but, you know, we added alleys in here. We added the information about the American Disabilities Act. Uh, we made it clear that these regulations are, are apply as part of the plan development district regulations. Um, we made the same changes about except for use instructors, got rid of 1-7, uh, kept a 123, and added Article 14, which, which deal with those uh, home occupations. And um, we had the same language about perimeter buffers and open space, except that, again, we're dealing with 50-foot buffer instead of a 40. Um, Boy, I tell you, there's a lot, of weird, a, lot of, a, lot, a lot that's very similar here. It's just the, the changes. Uh, I will direct your attention to one thing. Um, under uh, 8.4-5B, I'm sorry, C, C1. Um, these sections are very long. I, I admit they're hard to... They're hard to look up uh, on the fly. But we added a 100-foot resource protection area buffer. Um, in terms of, of uh, areas where things can be required in open space, should the city council uh, authorize that? Um, you know, I think it was implied, but the planning commission was very, uh, was very uh, sincere. Uh, a very, uh, they really felt like it needed to be in there. So, so we put it in there. Um, and going down to the very end, I mean, I'm not trying to go too fast, but I don't think there's anything in here that's really different. I would ask you to do the same thing with 8.3-11 as you did with 8.4-11. That is, retain the ore uh, under the architectural standards. Um, uh, just like you did in, in the last motion. Um, we put in zoning administrator instead of city manager. Um, that's about it. I'll be glad to take any questions you have. Okay, anybody have questions? Okay, not hearing any, we'll open the public hearing and ask if there's anyone in our audience who'd like to address this ordinance. All right, we'll close the public hearing and ask for a motion. I move that we adopt an ordinance amending the zoning ordinance by revising Article 8.3, Plan Unit Development Waterfront Overlay District, and under 8.3.11, after 4, include the original language or other architectural elements. All right. Second. All right, we have a motion made second. We adopt the ordinance. Any further questions or comments from anyone? If not, Ms. Kim, please. Councilman Southall? Aye. Vice Mayor Freeman? Aye. Councilman Hux? Aye. Councilman Green? Aye. Councilman Thigh? Aye. Mayor Hessel? Aye. Mr. Mayor, the motion carried by a vote of six to two. Thank you, Kim. We move on to new business. First item, an ordinance making additional appropriations for fiscal year 2022 in the general fund and the capital project fund for continuing support of the migration for the real property assessment software. Is that Ms. Tanya? Yes, sir. Thank you, Council Member Mayor. Tonight we have in front of you a recommendation to appropriate 200000 from the General Fund Unrestricted Fund Balance to capital projects. This is for the migration of the assessor software. We are on an old system called CAMI. It's going to move to a new software, Vision. So this money will help make sure that migration happens. Also, it's the intent of the assessor to retire June 1st. So this money will also allow us to overlap in that position and do the things needed to get the software set up and running for the next assessment. In addition, the ordinance allows the city manager to enter into contract with Vision to do such. Okay. Tanya, thank you very much. Any questions of Tanya? Okay. Me. Before a motion, someone. Mayor, I move that we adopt an ordinance making additional appropriate fiscal year 2022 in the general fund and the capital projects fund for continuing support of the migration for the real property assessment software. Second. All right. All right. Motion made second that we adopt the ordinance. Any concerns, comments? 
If not, Ms. Kim. Vice Mayor Freeman. Aye. Uh, Councilman Southall. Aye. Councilman Fye. Aye. Councilman Hux. Aye. Councilman Green. Aye. Mayor Hessel. Aye. Mr. Mayor, the motion carried by a vote of six to zero. Yeah, thank you, Kim. Second item under new business is a resolution making an appointment to the Peninsula Agency on Aging. Anyone have a name? May I move that we adopt a resolution making appointments to the Peninsula Agency on Aging by inserting the name Dr. Mary Powell. Okay. All right. Most may second we adopt the resolution with that name inserted. Any other concerns or comments? If not, Ms. Kim? Councilman Green? Aye. Councilman Hux? Aye. Councilman Fye? Aye. Councilman Southall? Aye. Vice Mayor Freeman? Aye. Mayor Hessel? Aye. Mr. Mayor, the motion carried by a vote of six to zero. All right, thank you very much. Comments, City Manager, Randy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Only really one thing this evening. I just wanted to uh, to thank Tanya for all of her work running point on this uh, reassessment migration. It is it is not simple. It's a long lead time coordination, and and her leadership will be what makes this successful. So, it's yet another significant duty as a sign. But I just to express that, that my thanks to her in, in this forum. Thank you. Okay. I'd just like to thank uh, everyone here and at home for paying attention to the city government. It's important. Invite your friends. Uh, attention to your city government and all government, for that matter, is very important. And we thank you for paying attention. Perry? I have nothing tonight. David? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have no comment. Okay, buddy. No comment. Yes, uh, on Wednesday at 5.30, there'll be a ribbon cutting down at South Lawson Park for the new picnic pavilion. I'd like to thank personally Tom Jones, who had a lot to do with all the little bits and pieces that we don't see uh, putting that together. And I understand Councilman Green had some kind of design input in there as well. <laughs> but, but there will be a thing and followed by food. I think the invitation went out last week, but because of rain, we had to cancel it on Thursday. Makeup will be this Wednesday at 5.30. Look forward to it. Thanks, sir. Um, let me just uh, say welcome to two new businesses which the council is familiar with, but the public is not yet, probably. And one is Early Birds. Um, they, they're open now. They're right there at the intersection of Hudgens Road and, and uh, With Creek. And Garden Towing, uh, located at uh, Coastal Avenue and uh, With Creek, what was a service station there. And it's um, They've really done a lot of work on it. It really looks nice and wish them a lot of success as they move along. Okay, anybody else? If nothing else, uh, we'll take a motion to adjourn. So move, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Motion made, second, we adjourn. Ms. Kim? Councilman Fye? Aye. Councilman Southall? Aye. Vice Mayor Freeman? Aye. Councilman Hux? Aye. Councilman Green? Aye. Mayor Hessel? Aye. Mr. Mayor, the motion carried by vote is 6 to 0. All right, we'll adjourn. Thank you, Kim.